Less is more. Many months ago I spoke about a graphical style I like to call representational. Where developers didn't have the computing power to create something that looked realistic, so instead used pixels or voxels to represent things, and let the mind paint a canvas over the top of them. Because somewhat fortunately for them, the brain's imagination is the greatest graphics card ever available. This is a follow-up video of sorts, and it's about how design philosophies within gaming coupled with newfound horsepower have caused a sea change in how things can be represented on your screen, opening the art team up to new ways of expressing their vision. All very exciting, and having more avenues to be creative can be a good thing indeed, but as with many other things in life, like cutting cement slabs during working hours with an earshot, or walking an attack dog at night, just because you can doesn't mean you should. I want to preface the rest of this by pointing out that just because a game is older and uses less graphical horsepower doesn't mean that it's better designed. There's been a lot of standardization in the industry over the past 30 to 40 years, and a lot of it has been an improvement. As evidenced by the fantastic source ports and recreations we've been blessed with over the years. Likewise, there are old games which litter the screen with too much graphical information. It's not a phenomenon exclusive to modern gaming. The first big issue I want to address is that some things seen as standard now are actually downgrades of what we've seen in the past. And when it comes to interface, that's no exception. Get with the times, old man. There are new and better ways of doing things now. I've been told that sort of thing for decades at this point and it still rings as hollow now as it did back then. Let's take a brief look at the operating systems I've primarily been using over the past few years. In Windows 95 through to Windows 10, my start bar was at the bottom, and I had Windows with buttons on the right hand corner with additional options underneath. That's been the de facto standard for me in every operating system I've used, from Poppy to Mint to Raspbian to Ubuntu. The last two had the start bar at the top and side respectively, but had them swiftly moved underneath by yours truly. So for 27 years, I've been using more or less the same method to control my OSs. Big whoop. What does that have to do with gaming? Get to the gaming already! Well, my impatient YouTubing pals, what I've talked about is a form of standardization. And with gaming, it also happens. Games copy other games, which in turn get copied, and the result is a series of refinements and improvements that leads to everything feeling and playing the same in their respective genres. That's another gripe for another video, though. So you're a new game, but you're not offering anything particularly new in the gameplay or story department, and all your systems are derivative of better games that came before. What can you do that makes you stand out with your AAA budget? Shiny menus, background animations, menu animations, sweet noises for every action, a raucous soundtrack. Lots of flashing lights, and bloom, and chromatic aberration, and SSAO, and ah, my eyes. For most people, I could end the video here. They get it because they've experienced and deduced why this is a bad thing. And it's why they're watching a DOS gaming channel. Not everyone immediately perceives or understands that there really is such a marked difference when playing these older games. The hallmarks of bigger budget titles that trickle down into others are a distraction tactic from the games companies. They're pulling you out from the core gameplay loop and forcing your brain to notice other things, in the hope that it will be too bedazzled by all the pageantry to notice that it's playing something that's so generic and similar to everything else that it becomes dull. Your brain does notice though. You'll be playing a game and just find that it's a real slog to complete, or that you don't want to pick it up next time around. Picture someone slamming sugary confectionery into your mouth against your will and being confused when you don't want more. But I give you the thing that's really sweet, they'd say. Why would you want me to stop? That's the taste bud equivalent of what these modern presentations are doing to your brain. If everything is eye-catching and worthy of your attention, then nothing is. And that leads to prioritization. Your mind eventually becomes overloaded by all the information transmitted via your screen and starts filtering out unnecessary information presented to it, completely defeating the purpose of it being there in the first place. 
Not to mention that all these additional time-wasting animations on menus and sounds and spectacles are downgrades to the functionality of classic menus that just did the job in question. It isn't limited to menus either. If I want to be an allied soldier in World War II, I'm not going to look at the hyper-realistic theme park rides that they call military shooters these days. They lead the player by the nose and make sure they don't miss a single carefully choreographed moment, often seizing control entirely. Player agency? Why would you want that? Just come along and enjoy this cinematic experience and don't question why you're not appreciating it. Look at that big explosion instead. Wasn't that neat? Better string a few more set pieces together before they get bored again. No, if I want to experience the conflict, I'll pick games from the early 2000s. Like the first two Call of Duty titles, the latter of which does actually take away player agency ironically, and Medal of Honor Allied Assault, where it was more about respect than spectacle. If you were smart with your play, you were rewarded. If you blundered about stupidly, you were punished. The level design allowed for a bit of roaming and the graphics hadn't reached a point where your brain started to struggle. The capabilities of the time meant there was a clearer delineation between the important stuff and the backdrop it existed within. Except for that terrible sniper level in Allied Assault that deliberately used fog and ugh. Look at this screenshot from Civilization. Each tile is clearly depicted. The menu is at the top and you've got the map and the sidebar. Nice and easy for your brain to focus on. Here's what Civ looks like nowadays. It's a cluttered mess of competing information and icons with an interface that's too large for it. Drawing inspiration from mobile gaming and inserting it into a serious 4X strategy title. It's another issue that has come about with the design teams being afforded more. They present more on screen and often attempt to reinvent the wheel and whatever they come up with results in being less effective than the tried and trusted method of before. It's a gambling of sorts, where the developer attempts to introduce something new that will be the standard bearer for games to come, which is to be commended because innovation is fun sometimes, but then it forgets that only innovation that works and is adopted in future titles is considered fun. And history is littered with ideas that weren't as good as other ideas and were cast aside because of that. And it's why this video is called Less is More, because with both the user interface and in-game, many newer developers are over-egging the pudding and giving the player too much to deal with. But even when they're doing the exact opposite and scaling things back and simplifying things for their dumbed-down audience, they get it wrong. They don't realise the best interfaces were ones that created a happy medium between unobtrusive yet informative on both visual and practical levels. Because none of these companies want to sacrifice graphical fidelity, the next step appears to be painting more on top of that, often integrating the design decisions into a heads-up display that the character has access to, so now your poor brain has to negotiate the world around it, and then the overlay highlighting aspects of that world, which is really just mitigating what the brain was already doing. So instead of experiencing the environment, you're staring at the quest markers and objectives while zoning in on specific parts of the HUD or area as you move from one task to the next, like a brainless drone. This undermines the efforts of a clutch of good designers out there who are capable of making things realistic yet visually distinct from their environment. All of the things I've talked about have been discussed by teams over the years as they attempt to create the definitive dopamine roller coaster ride that occasionally requires player input. It's why you see so many competing factors for the player's attention. Some of it is intentional, and other times it's an attempt by someone to rectify a design problem they saw in a different game that's now happening in their game. Back in the day, if you turned off a setting to improve performance, the game generally played better but looked worse. These days, if you turn off various graphic settings in games, they actually end up both looking and playing better, or quite commonly they end up looking utterly ridiculous with minimal performance improvements, because the company didn't bother testing for lower power systems and assumed nobody would downgrade the graphics options that much. It's the act of deliberate obfuscation as a graphical tool that annoys me, because it's endemic within most of the other areas of modern gaming too. From sound to level design through to coding itself, where previously older developers came across limitations and coded brilliant ways around them, now with all the computing power in the world, modern day developers are either curtailed by the industry or artificially limit their ambition and then have the audacity to obscure that limitation, 
so that things will look fantastic in game or in the trailer, but when you actually get round to playing it, oh, not so impressive after all. Now, this has been around since as long as game advertising has been a thing, but now it feels like rather than the attitude of, hey, look at this cool thing we can do, companies are cranking out games and trying to make them look more than they are. And that's why I feel like less is more, because I'll take functionality over form every time. Your brain can only appreciate so much happening at once, and bad design decisions will eventually send it to sleep. So while I encourage innovation from developers, make sure you're innovating in the right direction and that your innovations don't end up being worse than the games you're following in the footsteps of. And if in doubt, let the greatest processor in the known universe handle some of the load. And let the player's brain sort things out instead. Do you like me talking into a microphone? Turns out I do it a lot. Hundreds of scripted videos and almost a thousand other videos on top of that are on my channel. Feel free to take a look, and if you like what you see, you can always subscribe.